Whenever I do any research on bands and artists, I come across certain halls and venues multiple times. The Fillmore, Madison Square Garden, Earl's Court, the LA Forum. But one arena in particular seems to come up more than any other. And that's the Cow Palace near San Francisco, California. It seems like not only has every legendary act played there, but also has a story to go along with it. That said, I don't really know much about the place itself, and I'm guessing some other folks don't know either, so that's why we're taking a closer look at this mecca of rock and roll today. Well, for starters, it's located in Daly City, not too far from San Francisco. It was constructed in 1941, and its name has a relatively dark origin. While the state was spending money on building livestock arenas and show buildings, a newspaper in 1935 asked, why when people are starving should money be spent on a palace for cows? The people behind the project turned it around and gave the arena its name. While it did get some use as an arena after its opening, it wasn't long before it was being used as a processing center for the military for troops going into the Pacific Theater during World War II. Throughout its years, it has been a regular stop for touring shows such as Sesame Street, The Ringling Brothers, Disney on Ice, and Cirque du Soleil. It was also the site of two Republican national conventions. It has also hosted nearly every type of sporting event, from soccer to boxing, football to roller derby, and basketball to hockey. True to its name, it has also been the home of the Grand National Rodeo since it was opened. What it's probably best known for, though, are the numerous shows it has hosted from legendary musicians and bands. This is not a complete list, but some of the more noteworthy bands and incidents. The Beatles began their first U.S. tour here on August 19th of 1964, and then would later return here for two more shows during their second U.S. tour. It was here where Keith Moon of The Who passed out during the set, and fan Scott Halpin came on stage to help finish the set. The Allman Brothers in 1973, with members of The Grateful Dead sitting in, the Grateful Dead would play there themselves, and the show would, of course, be recorded and later released as Dick's Picks, Volume 24. Two shows from Wings in 1976 would be featured in part on the Wings Over America LP. The Grateful Dead would return in 1976 on New Year's Eve with Santana, and would also release this as Live at the Cow Palace. Neil Young and Crazy Horse would film and record here in 1978 for the album and film Live Rust. That same year, also on New Year's Eve, would be the final performance of The Runaways. During a show in March of 1978, Neil Diamond would collapse on stage and later have a tumor removed near his spine. In 1985, Prince would perform six sold-out shows. On the tickets, it read, Wear Purple. It served as the first venue of Amnesty International's Conspiracy of Hope concerts, which featured U2, Sting, Jackson Brown, Lou Reed, and Peter Gabriel, as well as many, many others. Fleetwood Mac's 1987 shows would be filmed here. In 1991, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Pearl Jam, and Nirvana would play in December, with Nirvana returning for a benefit show in April of 1993, featuring The Breeders and L7. In 1996, Fish would play their first and only show at this venue. The list of bands and stories could go on and on, but it's safe to say your favorite band has probably played here at some point, and they have a story to go along with it. The Cow Palace seems to be one of the key areas of music history, with its long list of guests and notable events. Luckily, unlike other venues, it has remained in use since its creation, and hopefully will host many more acts in the future. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to help support this channel, like, share, comment, subscribe, check out my old videos. And of course, I will see you guys next time.